this is why this is why I love Porsches so much because they have so much information. It's everything is completely integrated. Um, the car knows what it is. The factory knows what the car is. Um, everything else. So it's it's brilliant. Hi, this is Raj from MR Sports Cars. In this episode of Diary of Porsche Specialist, I'm going to show you how to run diagnostics on a Porsche 911 997 Gen 2. This is a 2009, and I've got PWIS 3. So I can show you some of the things that you will be able to see when running diagnostics. Now the first thing you need is obviously a PWIS 3 equipped machine um, with the PWIS 3 um, VCI, Vehicle Communication Interface, which is this part here. You need a USB cable and a laptop with the software installed. So I'll just turn it on. My system is actually, I've, I've got it a few months ago, but um, it took me about two months to get it running. Um, it's a, a device I bought secondhand and there was an issue with the VCI, so I had to get a new VCI for it, but it's all working now. So I load up the system. I'm gonna use uh, version 38.2. You can see it's all stick it up with my brand. So that will load that up. Now because mine is, is a Wi-Fi, my one my VCI, this this thing is actually Wi-Fi enabled, so I don't actually need that USB cable. So while that's loading up, I'm gonna get the car ready. So first thing you need to do is have the key in the ignition and just turn it so that all the lights are on on the dashboard. So it's basically in position two. Um, I would turn down the, the fan, obviously, because you don't want that running while the car's not running, just unnecessarily flatten the battery. And then the, the OBD port is actually there. It's the little purple plug there. And unfortunately, this, this has all of its lights on this side, but to get it in, you actually have to face it the wrong way around. Just plug it in securely. See that it's got its, its lights all lit up so that's on there now going back to the machine what I tend to find is that this this loads up automatically this is P with three it doesn't actually show that it's it's connected there but that's fine it's it's actually using a slightly different way to connect to it now what I do is actually I turn Wi-Fi off turn it back on again basically the software needs to have loaded before you connect this is, this is purely because I've got a Wi-Fi interface. Connect the unit to the Wi-Fi after this, this is all loaded up. And it will say, it's got this little warning, it's, it's uh, gonna say that it's limited access, basically because it's not actually internet Wi-Fi, it's just a connection of, of Wi-Fi through, through the system here. Now that shows us that being connected now here you have the diagnostics um, and you click on, basically just click on diagnostics. Now hopefully it should auto detect what model it is. So it says model line 997 recognized. This procedure is exactly the same for the 987 Gen 2 Cayman and Boxsters as well. So press continue. So I don't actually have to be in the car, which is great. This is why I like using the Wi-Fi system. <clears throat> but I'll sit here. So there we go, so you can see the car. So this car's covered 75, 800 something miles. It's 2009, as I said, so it's 12 years old. So on here you have, this is touchscreen as well, so you have all the different systems in the car available to view. Now you can run um, what's called a creating a vow. But I'm not going to do that because on these cars you can actually look up quite some interesting figures by just uh, so there we go. So you've got vehicle handover and things like that. Um, 
which is quite cool, but I'll go back to where I wanted to be. So if I go to engine motor electronics, and then I go to actual values input signals, and it, you can select several of these, so you can go. Um, so if I select those three, click next. Your system works quite fast actually, which is good. So if I wanted to look up the distances fault memory erased, mileage, distance with engine check on. I mean, there's a huge amount of stuff you can actually interrogate on these cars. And this is exactly what Porsche do when there's an issue um, they will be looking for certain parameters to look up. So I'm going to look up today. Some of the things I look at um, when I'm buying cars and producing their diagnostic reports. So camshaft deviation is one of them to see, to see if the camshaft is worn. Obviously I already selected the mileage. I look for operating hours to see if a car's been clocked, the odometer to see whether it corroborates with what's on the dashboard and then here we go so ignitions that have exceeded range one so these are all your over revs so you need to select all of them let's see if there's anything else, no that's all at the end so um, I might as well just click these two as well and then you just press next and basically all go away interrogate the car and come back with the figures it's very, very fast. So here we go, mileage 122060. And the odometer says 122061. There will be a slight deviation, but that's that's good that they're, they're both corroborating with roughly 70, 75,000 miles, because that's in kilometers, obviously it says, it gives the unit there. And then you've got distance with engine check on zero, Distance since fault memory arrays, 4,000 kilometers. So I know that someone hasn't basically taken one of these machines, reset everything in the car to basically make the car look okay just before I bought it. And then I drive down the road and it starts sort of misbehaving. Um, this car has clearly been running fine for a long time, 4,000 kilometers. Then I look for camshaft deviation. So you look for figures that are below, I think it's three degrees. So these are both comfortably below. You look for around 1.8 normally. So that's fine. Operating hours, 2,196 hours. So this is a separate counter for how long the engine's been run in hours. So en um, aircraft engines and things um, aren't measured in mileage, they're measured in hours. And it's the same with these engines. They, they also log things in the unit of hours. So you can actually do a quick calculation between the mileage and the hours to work out what the average speed that those hours have been traveled. And basically you're looking for somewhere in the region of broadly 20 to 40 miles an hour most cars are around 30 in the UK that's typically over the life of a car it will travel at 30 miles an hour on average because you've got city driving as traffic but then the high speed driving on a motorway and roughly that equates to over life required 30 miles an hour so if that mileage is significant if that miles per hour is significantly out of that range then you need to start looking at is the car's history as it is as it should be has it been clocked has it been tampered with so that's what i use that figure for is basically to determine is the car genuinely the mileage it says it is and this car is very much in line with what it should be i think it comes out of 31 or something but i haven't i haven't got that figure here now then i look for over revs so the, the ones to watch out for are anything above range three this car's got zero in range, no over in range two, range three, range four, range five, range six. So that is all good news. And there's only 1146 sparks in range one. Range one, you just literally trigger if you're going, um, say in manual mode and you let it hit the red line, it's bouncing off the red line. So that's that 1146. And it tells you the last occurrence so what the last time it logged at least one ignition in that range was 2172 so roughly 24 hours ago in terms of engine driving so if you equate that to around 30 miles an hour it's over 600 miles ago it was last 
over revved at range one. Range one is literally hitting the rev, red limiter, uh, rev limiter, um, and if you're traveling downhill, it can sometimes trigger a range two. If you're going down a steep downhill, you hit the red line, it will probably trigger a range two. So this car's been very well looked after in that sense. I normally take pictures of these bits and then I produce them in the PDF, reproduce this in the PDF that you see on my, for sale ads, um, on my website. Um, other things you can look at, you can see are all there. The other th interesting thing you can look at is what's the data so you can check the um, the VIN number. Uh, production number is there. You can see that the gearbox. Um, and then if we go to M numbers, these are manufacturing codes so you can see what options are fitted to the car. So this is great, this system, at being able to see like it's got Bose, universal audio interface, um, full leather interior, vehicle tracking, PCM3, Sport Chrono Package Plus, all of the options on this car. This is how I know exactly what has been fitted to a car. Rain sensor there, steering wheel heating, that's another nice option, rain sensor. All of that stuff is stored on the car's ECU. It knows what's fitted to it. And then X numbers are sort of like special codes. So this car has a few, I think, yeah, seat belts in silver. So the car knows it's got silver seat belts and it knows the the headrests are embossed with the Porsche crest. This is why this is why I love Porsches so much because they have so much information. It's everything is completely integrated. Um, the car knows what it is. The factory knows what the car is. Um, everything else. So it's it's brilliant. Now I tend to, um, I'm not actually going to go into that. They're, that's as far as I normally go with a car because that's all I need to know is basically is the car what it should be. You can also check for the faults as well. So so there's, there's a couple of faults that are showing. Power supply without engine operation that's fine, power supply, RC, below limit value. That's basically saying it's, it's had a low battery. So that's, they're not really things to worry about. So there, I'll come out of that. So that's the next procedure is when you're finishing is to close this first before disconnecting the VCI in the car. So it takes a little while for it to shut down. But now you're at this page you're essentially uh, back to the start. So there we go. I mean, there is some other cool stuff on here, but that's the, that's the majority of what most people will need um, when, if, they've, if they've got PWIS 3. So I will now disconnect, disconnect the VCI. So now that's disconnected, I can turn this laptop off. And that shuts that down. And then just turn the car off and you're done. So I um, hope you found that video useful. Um, if you have any questions about this or getting diagnostics done on your car, um, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thanks for watching.